day when, when I was born was that they were not going to treat me different. And um, and I think, you know, it's it, part of that journey was, was my realization that for all their best intentions, I was going to come to the realization that I was different. And so once that happened, um, I had to take on that journey. I had to sort of bring on this um, – this hand, I had, to, I, I had to carry that with me, and I had to, to um, certainly process through what that meant, and and it, it meant a lot of different things. It meant uh, probably a desire to prove, especially as a kid, that I could play sports. Um, I think the, the 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 desire to to prove to other kids that I was as good as they were, or I could do things as as well as they could, really proved to be a, a very motivating thing for me and maybe work really, really hard, and, um, and I think find accomplishment through that. And I think that's um, – and that was certainly encouraged by my parents. My parents certainly um, encouraged me to, to play and, and, and adapt and figure out ways to play better, um, my dad especially, uh, with baseball and basketball and football, just really helping me figure out how, how to catch the ball better, how to, how to feel the ball better, and, and um, what – uh, positions would would uh, that I would be a little stronger in, and um, so yeah, so they they were completely um, supportive and very inspirational to me, and, and still are. I mean, not even just in what they they did for me, but just the, the, themselves as individuals. Um, uh, I learned a lot by, by observing them. They were um, they were good mentors to have. So that, that shows really uh, an opportunity for me to say thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. I, I'm sure that they appreciate that and are very grateful that you've come to live your life the way you want to live it and not any, let anything hold you back. Yeah, I think so. I think they are. I think they're, um, I think they're happy, you know. They probably wish I would have gotten a business degree just uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as well. All right. <laughs> but... Uh, but no, but they are. They're they're very happy. So that's great. You're just successful in a different way than what maybe they would have liked. But they still stand behind you and support you in what you're doing. So that's what counts. Now, David, co-host, <laughs> I guess I'll call it. Yes. You had a question. Yes, I did. Uh, other than your parents, who remains your biggest supporters of your career? Hmm. Um. Well, I, I have I have several friends uh, that uh, just kind of a core group of folks who um, I went to graduate school with that are, are always very supportive, um, and they they tend to come in and see if I'm if I'm doing a show again in New York. They're the ones who will usually be there and, and, and supporting it. Um, you know, I have a lot of extended family as well that, that continues to support. Um, I have uh, I, I think the, you know now with things like Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, you you know, more people are kind of learning about, like people from my past, about what I'm doing and, and certainly being very supportive of um, of that work. So uh, there's a wide variety of different people who who are supportive, I would, but I would say probably that core group of, of friends that I that I was in school with are, are, uh, are really special to me. That's great. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering why you decided to write a play instead of a book, or are you thinking of writing a book as well? Oh, that's a great question. I, I think because I'm an actor, <laughs> I, I think I needed mm-hmm. to – and a lot, of the, 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 a lot of the way this was created was through sort of kind of improv and, and, and talking and, and me telling stories. Really, it came from the stories that I would tell, and I, I worked for a theater uh, many years ago in Columbus, Ohio, and would would be telling these stories to make people laugh, and and the artistic director of the theater said, you know, you should think about making a play um, and sort of incorporating these stories into it. So it kind of came from a performance place, and um, and so a lot of the writing was informed with uh, the sort of the storytelling and and and, and talking about things. Uh, I do plan to write a book. I, I've uh, uh, <laughs> it's funny. When, when the idea for the show came, it took about four years or so of me just sort of saying, I have this great idea for a show, a great idea for a show. And ultimately, kind of 
getting to a place where, where I was able to write it and, and, and begin that process. And it's now kind of the same thing with the book. It's been about three years or so that I've like, oh, I've got to do a book. I'm going to do this great book. i got to get a book. And so hopefully I'm hoping that it's, it's, it's on the, the right uh, trajectory to, uh, to start to come to reality pretty soon. Um, I, yeah, it, you know, you're always busy and, and you're doing the play and, and going different places with it. And I, I know it's not easy to sit down and actually probably even write, you know, a paragraph at this time, but I'm sure eventually right. you'll get to it. I, I think so. And I think what what I would like to do first, honestly, is I, I've adapted Little Potato to a, to a children's play called The Boy Who Would Be Captain Hook, um, which is uh, it's great this uh, theater festival I'm, I'm doing in New York right now is, is, is producing both of those shows. So I'm very fortunate in that way. And I think that might be the, the, the way to start is, um, is just trying to figure out how I can create that children's uh, story. And uh, mm-hmm. I think that seems kind of interesting to me and, 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 and a, little, um, a little less daunting <laughs> than yeah, right. trying to, uh, to write kind of a a, a broader book. Because I, I, I would love to, you know, in the book, I think because there were so, both my parents and, 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 uh, and grandparents and, and, and a lot of folks that influenced me, I, I would really want to dwell or delve into to some of that history as well. And I think that, I, I believe, is sort of the daunting aspect of it, that there, there's a lot of, you know, a little potato and hard to peel kind of, it does sort of, you, when you start to peel away a little bit, uh, of that story, there, there are a lot of, of, of things that kind of brought me to this place and a, a lot of different stories that have, have, have become the narrative or helped me to develop this narrative of, of my life. So I would want to give some attention to all of that. And I think that is, that's kind of the daunting aspect. And I think it's just a, a matter of, of just diving in and trying to get into some of that history and some of that uh, some of the stories that I want to tell that I've heard, you know, my whole life growing up, but I want to figure out how I can tell them because I think those are those are all stories that are that that build upon themselves to to create, uh, you know, the story of 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 me and 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 what right. I've done in my life. Right. Yeah. Because you know you have more than one influence in your life, so you oh, yeah. you kind of want to bring them all in, but that's not an easy task. So <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So the kids' book, the kids book would be an easy task. So maybe if I can, if I can accomplish that, uh, and, and I think it's a fun story too, and I think it's, um, it, it, it has a very good lesson and uh, and something very, very positive for 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 families to talk about. So, um, so I do want to kind of maybe throw energy into that first, and then see if we can get that working, and and then uh, and then move on from there. Right. Now, I was going to bring up the boy who would be Captain Hook, I almost said Hook, um, for our listeners. Would you mind just elaborating a little bit more on that and what it's about for them, so in case they want to take their kids? Oh, sure, sure. It, it's, it's um, you know, a little bit of hard to tell. It's certainly a family show. It's, it's uh, And I, I had this idea that I could take it into schools and, and that it would, it would do really, uh, really well. That, and, it, and it does play very well to kids. But sort of a, a younger elementary, from like K to second, third grade, um, I, I was getting feedback that I wanted to see something a little bit different, or was there a way to adapt it to that younger audience? And uh, I, I, I processed and kind of worked through for a few years, and and they came up with the idea that I could explore this sense of play because I, you know, playing was so important to me as a kid, and just wanting to be included. Um, on the playground, on the baseball field or football field or basketball court, all those things kind of came back to me in these memories of, of really wanting to play and how at times I would, I would not be the one picked because if I didn't know the kids, they, they saw my hand and they, or they saw maybe the metal hook that I wore, I wore a prosthetic hook, uh, I wasn't included. So I kind of went back and thought about those feelings and those stories and I created a little bit more of a fictional story of uh, of my life as I began school that I was not included on the playground. The kids didn't really know how to to include me because of this metal hook. They were a little afraid that I would pop the ball or 
or uh, I, I might hurt someone um, until the game became Peter Pan, and then it made sense that I would be Captain Hook, that, that I was perfect. And mm-hmm. so the idea of finally being included was, was huge and, and exciting. But ultimately it became very boring to always be Captain Hook. Um, and right. I, I decide that I want to be a hero as well. I don't always want to be the villain. And so I, I, I try to change the game and make Captain Hook a hero. It freaks the kids out on the playground because they don't know how to, to deal with that. And it's, it's, to them, it's you have to play the part you're supposed to play. And so I kind of go on this journey to find a way to be a hero with my hook or with, even without my hook. And, um, and then kind of learn that I can do all these other kind of things, that I can adapt to play sports without my hook and that um, uh, there are other characters that I can certainly be and kind of go back to the playground and sort of teach this lesson uh, to the kids. And, and, and they come to, to see that, oh, wow, we get it, that you can be a hero even when you don't look like someone else. And so and then we're able to kind of go back and, 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 and sort of play games together in a variety of ways. And, and um, so I'm not, I'm not always seen as Captain Hook. I can still play Captain Hook sometimes, but that's not all that I'm seeing as being, that, that they, they realize that there's more to a person than sometimes the first perceptions that we have once we get to, to know that person a little bit better. So I think that that, to me, is, is such a great lesson um, for, for kids to, to think about because they, they certainly understand the idea of play, they understand the idea of imagination, and, and, and hopefully the idea that, that yeah, if, if we come across kids who look different than us or maybe we do things differently than us, that we can adapt our games and, and, and include them in a variety of different ways. Um, and then that makes the game even better. So that's sort of the, the journey of uh, the boy who would be Captain Hook. I absolutely love that. You have no idea. I have a special needs son. He's now 17, but that's an age only. Um, and I would love for him to see that play because I would hope that it would inspire him and get him to understand about, you know, what he goes through and how to deal with it. I I think you're doing that for a lot of people, both kids and adults. And I thank you for that. Thank you. I I, I hope so, too. I hope, um, you know, that that I've been able to take him into schools and and, – and it does, you know, it, it, I hope it's entertaining for the teachers, you know, that they're, they're entertained, but it, then it gives, it gives um, um, some things to talk about. Uh, I, I was in New Jersey, I think a, a week or so ago, and this, you know, little kindergartner, uh, precious little girl, kind of, you know, I do a question and answer afterwards just so I, I can, because, because kids are going to be curious. They're curious about me and they're curious about the show and sort of keep them talking about it. And this precious little girl says, you know, it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter if you have one hand or you don't have one hand. It's fine. And I was like, uh, I was like you know what? I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that for a very, very long time. You know? Yeah. And, uh, so it's, it's, it's great. I hope that that, that message does, does come across. And, um, so I'm, and, I, and I'm so, you know, thankful that she gets an opportunity to, to, to be performed in, in a theater, it's, it's a lot of fun to do it in a theater uh, at the uh, at this festival, the All for One festival that I'm doing this month. And and, and uh, I think there's another performance that's coming up. And I think we, we have some uh, we have a, a good group of kids, and I think even a birthday is uh, is coming, uh, a little birthday celebration. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun um, in a couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I'm just going to let our listeners know the dates and times for a little potato and hard to peel are Friday, October 25th at 7 p.m., Sunday, October 27th at 4 p.m., and Saturday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Um, the boy who would be Captain Hook is Saturday, November 2nd at 11 a.m. I'm trying to read my own writing. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> Both shows are taking place at the Cherry Lane Theater, which is 18 Commerce Street in New York, uh, West Village. Uh, let's I think, see. It's, I think it's, it's 38 Commerce. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I copied and pasted that one, so that one you can't blame me on. That was, I'm not going to blame anyone. And I, I, 
I'm pretty sure it's, it's there. 